Good day everyone. Once again, this is Arvin Alonso demonstrating to you basics of IT application tools in Microsoft Excel. So, this video presentation will focus more on uh, format as table. Don't you know that a worksheet is composed of range of cells, but those range of cells can be converted into a table. So what is a table? Normally we are familiar with table when we would like to insert a table in Microsoft Word. In database management, table is very important especially when we are creating an information system because the table is used as storage of every single unit of data. Okay, now uh, I have here uh, an initial file a workbook which I can demonstrate how to format a stable but before that uh, this one this prod uh, worksheet is already converted into table just to show you uh, I have here prod ID prod name Category, buying price, retail price, and wholesale price. Say, for example, that this worksheet or workbook, uh, workbook I should say, uh, will allow you or will allow me to monitor my products and the different the sales of all of these products, uh, depending whether it was bought as it was purchased as retail or wholesale. So. Uh, just to show you, in the product name, actually I'm uh, in the product category. I used a data validation here, and the data validation is using list. But take note that this list comes from these categories here. So we have the different list here. So that whenever I enter a value here, say for example, uh, shoot shoes and then automatically there should be additional list of category here how did I uh, create this one uh, very simple before I converted this one as table I initially there were two so and then I, I, in the data validation the source will just be uh, coming from this uh, range of cells so what I did is click on this and then you just select downward if you want to if you want to have additional uh, categories then you just need to add more to this for example up to 15 okay so that is how the product category was done now just to show you, uh, in every product, normally the product ID or the item code should be unique. And in this uh, discussion, part of what I will show you is how to avoid duplicate values for a product ID or for an item code. Or in the case of employees, employee ID. Okay. So, or in the case of students, student ID should be unique, just like this one. So, what I did, okay, the first thing that uh, was done, let me just uh, remove first this one, convert to range. So, this is not yet table. I'll select format as table. Then, you select any style here. Say, for example, I just, I want this style. So, where is the data for your table? Uh, A1 to F3. So, you notice that this is the highlighted uh, range of cells. So, check on this. My table has headers. So, if you're going to use the first row as your header, then this should be checked. So, I, this, this is supposed to be checked. Click OK. Now, so that when I enter the next value, I should 
highlight this one and create a name. Actually, what the name that I use here is PID. Okay? So, you notice whenever you select here, there are names. When I click P name, this is, uh, this is the range that will be highlighted. Q, uh, we have in the other sheet. Okay? So, all the names of range of cells, it can be seen in the name box. So, this is my PID. So, what I did here is, in the PID, I created a data validation. Okay? And I used custom. This is actually the formula equals count if PID. What's PID? The PID is the name of the of these two cells, the range of these two cells. Comma A2. What is A2? The first value in the product ID. Or if in the case of students, the first value in the student ID. In the case of employees, the first ID in the uh, column of employee ID. Okay, so less than or equal to 1. This is the formula that will be used so that it can detect a possible duplicate value whenever you enter uh, a duplicate value. So I just have an input message here, perhaps enter a unique value. And then under error alert, product code or product ID existing. Try again. Click OK. So, and then you notice that when I will enter a new value automatically that let me just remove this one the next row will be part of the table so whatever format conditional format or data validation that you applied here will be automatically adapted in the next row of your table so going back to my original uh, worksheet or table so this is my table for all the list of my products okay so that when i enter a new value say for example 17 that should not be accepted why because it's already existing as one of the product ids okay so 18 nike for example what category say for example shoes uh, what was your buying price? Say, for example, 1000 So, you notice that my retail price and wholesale price will automatically compute based on my formula. By the way, my formula here is equals round up uh, D19 plus D19 times 70%, comma 0. What's this round up? Round up is actually... Uh, Almost the same with round off, but this one automatically rounds it up. Okay, so D19 times 70%, uh, assuming that my markup value here is 70% when I have a retail price. And my markup value for if it's wholesale price is 30%. So these are my list of products. Now we go to my sales. Say, for example, I would like to monitor my sales. Okay. So this is not yet formatted as table. But prior to formatting the table, notice that I have a lookup value here. Another function that I would like to introduce to you. Okay. So what is lookup? Let me just uh, enlarge this one and show you the formula for my product name. The look up here is if A2 equals blank, actually this one uh, says that when this is blank, there is no value to be displayed under product name. But the real VLOOKUP is this one. VLOOKUP is a function that looks up 
for a certain value and then compares it in another table to check whether that value is existing. And when it's existing, it gives you the appropriate value in the next column. Okay, say for example, we look up A2, this one. Okay, A2, 2. Is there a product ID 2 in the table product ID to product name? What is product ID to product name? Product ID to product name. These two columns, A and B. Okay? So, that's product ID to product name. Colon. So, take note, you can use the, the names of your columns here. Comma 2. What does 2 means? That when A2 is actually found in this area, in, in its real sense, it searches in the product ID. Is found in this table, it will return a value coming from the column 2. And what is the column 2? The product name. Okay? So, and then false if it's not found. So, say for example, I will enter 17. So, 17 is actually Levi's shirt. When we check on this, 17 is Levi's shirt. Okay? When I type 18, 18 is the Nike shoes. Okay? So, that's VLOOKUP. The same as true with the, with the category. The category is, uh, if A2 is blank, then it's blank. VLOOKUP A2, table 1. Actually, this is called table 1, but I'll show you how to edit afterwards. Table 1, product ID to product category. So, there are already three columns here. Product ID, product name to product category. And the return value once the this value is found is the column under product category. Column 3. Okay? So, that's VLOOKUP. Then, I have here actually a data validation again. For sold as, it's either R or W only. Capital letter. Why? So, uh, here, it monitors whether... The, the sale is retail or wholesale. So, once it's retail, automatically the unit price again for a retail value will be uh, displayed. So, that's my formula. Okay? And then, when it's wholesale value, the unit price is the wholesale value that you have here. 150 buying uh, 255 retail price 195 is the wholesale price so let's check on that okay if it's retail 255 it's if full sale 195 how much was was sold for for example for the day okay so I can easily monitor my uh, sales now let me convert this one into table. So, format as table in the home tab. Then, what would, what would be your, your style? Okay. Anyway, you can select any style, but later on, you can format if you want to. Say, for example, I will uh, use this one. So, where is the table coming from? And then, click OK. So, like that. Like, for example, this one, you cannot see the label, so you just change the color. So, adjust if you want to. Now, we can now add more sales. Notice, 1. I type 1, but this value automatically uh, is displayed. Why? Because of the VLOOKUP. So, when I press R here, the unit price will be based on the retail price that I have in the product uh, table. Okay, how much was sold? Automatically, it will compute. 
Okay? So, 4. 4 is in polo, polo shirt. Full sale price, 130. How much was sold? 3. Okay. Now, when you have formatted your data range into table, notice that there's a design here. The design will allow you to so, change your table name. So, for example, I will change my table name, this table, to uh, sales table. Okay. So that whenever I would like to see my sales table, it will be highlighted. Okay. The same is true with this. This is actually table 1. So, I'll change this one into product list. Okay. So, in your name box, there's already a product list. So, that's... So, when I would like to go to my sales table, automatically it will go to the sales table. I will discuss in a separate uh, video presentation how to make use of the pivot table. What's the purpose of insert slicer? Uh, let me show you insert slicer using this one. Say, for example, I will have an insert slicer. Insert slicer is alternative to filtering. What will I use as insert slicers? Product, uh, will it be product ID and so, or so on and so forth? I will use product category. I'll click OK. So you notice that I have this one. So that when I click on the dusters, only those dusters category will be displayed. When I click on long pants, only those long pants, polo shirts, sun shoes, and so on and so forth. So you can easily monitor what are your different products under certain category. Okay? You can create another slicer if you want to. Okay? So, let me remove. Okay? So, that's how you can make use of the uh, insert slicer. Then, would you like to have a total row? Say, for example, here, I would like to have a total row. I'll just go to, I'll take not click in any part of your table. Total row. Automatically, there's a total row here. What would you like to total? For example, the amount. Will it be average, count, count numbers, maximum, sum? Okay, quantity sold. Say, for example, count. There are only four records. Some, it will add the number of quantity sold. Okay? So here, for example, count how many sales transactions has been done. Four. Okay? So average unit price, for example. That's your average unit price. Then, if you don't like to see your total row, you just click on this. The total row will be removed. So, that's how you can make use of the total row. This is your row 1, which is your heading, has already a filter button. If you don't like the filter button, then you just remove this under the design tab. Uh, I'll discuss more about filtering in the next video. So, that's all about how to make use of your... Uh, Format a stable from data range, you format a stable so that whatever data validation, whatever format that you applied in a certain column, it will be automatically uh, adapted in the next row. And at the same time, you can have this total row uh, to be immediately part of your table whenever you would like to insert the total row here. Okay? So that's all about format as table. I hope you learned something new in this presentation. God bless everyone.